Hey, what's up, y'all? Hope you guys are all doing good. Um, today I have a 15-4 and 4 KD game from Trials the past weekend, uh, going up against Zavlar here and a good duo stack. Both of them are, I think, 1.7 KD plus, so uh, I'm playing solo here. I think this is a good game to kind of show, you know, my thought process in a lot of ways because, one, this is a really tough map for GLs, and you kind of have to play unorthodox. And throughout this game, I'm going to kind of show you how you kind of have to take stupid risks stupid isn't really the right word but unorthodox plays lead to good rewards so coming into this first round um, i see the zones inside in this little area i when i start the game i like to just kind of come here and, and play it out i like to play around this angle see if they push to take map control um, but these guys don't so we're kind of just waiting around unfortunately teammate out here um, you're gonna see he gets a pick but unfortunately he gets traded instantly and this puts us in kind of a bad spot because yeah, he did get the trade, but, you know, if we were to push, you know, if I was to push here, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, looking back, maybe I could push this, but, you know, it, it would have been kind of, kind of stupid since we have the zone here, and I don't think my teammate would have come with me, um, but unfortunately, you know, we're in a 3v2 now, I'm just trying to suppress this doorway, and maybe get a lucky shot, so I hit that 89, and I'm thinking good, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty good here, um, and I try and do this little Icarus dash to loop back around, but I get stuck on my teammate, um, I get the one kill post-mortem, but unfortunately they, they trade us. So kind of a misplay there, but at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just a, it's a tough round with, with teammate dying in the way he did. All right, guys, so coming into round two, uh, this is something that I want to kind of note. This is something that's really, really small, but can give you a lot of benefit um, and, and really will help you in your game. So when you come up to these stairs, a lot of people, they'll shoulder peek this little pillar here, which is where the guy aiming if you notice here i slide away from the corner to the far side which you can see like closes the gap off a little bit and then i immediately jump back the other direction the opposite way so if he's trying to trace me with his snipe as i'm going the little jump there so like, you know if if he domes me head on you know fair enough you know if it, it's kind of like a, a mental game at that point if he's holding that angle if he's expecting me to go slide across let's say i've slid three angles in the game and he picks up okay this guy he's not playing close he's going to peek the side if that happens then you know fair enough he gets the kill most players aren't really smart enough to uh to notice that but this little tech right here if you just slide when you peek a corner if you just slide all the way to the left and then immediately you jump to the right back into cover you see i hit a 138 there and got him off the angle and survived and now i actually take this map control which i'm able to punish this res here or this uh this push if i didn't do this peak initially here then i wouldn't have been able to have the map control to peek into the left where the zone was last round so that was a really important uh really important play you don't really that's one of those plays that most players kind of just watch you know when they watch my videos they kind of just see and it kind of glosses over in the back of their mind but um Little things like that have a big impact on the on the result of a round. So teammate gets a trade. Uh, now all me and teammate have to do. This guy's at the nipple, so I like to call it. Um, I get him down really low. I should have killed him honestly, but uh, thankfully teammate picks him up and uh, a really good round. All right, so uh, coming off that last round win, good round there. Um, for side, I didn't really do it last time because the zone was was over here. But on this side, um, it's really important on this map that you want to take this divider control here. So you'll see I'll push up here, and I like to kind of just pre-fire this angle here with one fighting line shot. You'll notice here, I'm going to play this in full speed. I shoot the fighting line shot, and I hold the angle with my GL like this, but I don't shoot because I don't want to waste my special ammo. A lot of times when you hit someone here, they're not just going to, like, they're either going to swing you full or they're going to completely back up. You know, they're not really just going to stay where they are because they know at this point, three rounds in, that, oh, if I stand here and don't do anything, this guy's going to kill me. So being, you know, showing restraint here with your special ammo, this is a really, really good play that I like to do. And then this little Icarus dash across is also really good because it just, a lot of times you aren't going to get sniped there because you're going to be a little bit up off the ground and um, a sniper won't be pre-aiming that, so it'll be a harder shot for them. So that's really like a really safe way to gain map control with this loadout on this map. I know it's really specific and um, you might not be put in that position all the time, but I still think it's important to note kind of my thought process there. Um, but at this point, we're in a really, really bad spot because if the zone was inside like it was on the first round, then I would have been content to kind of just hold it and suppress the doorway again. But losing the outside pick and we have the good spawn, 
I kind of half, you know, in my mind, I think I have to make a play. So I'm, I'm trying to just do something unorthodox, which is what I was talking about before. I just swing this across and I peek this. But in reality, I... It, it was it wasn't a great play because in my mind I'm like oh they won't expect me swinging this but at the same time they're holding the res from this angle that they've already seen so in reality I'm just kind of peeking into them where they're already holding um, and I, I get the trade but unfortunately the trade's not good enough the team other team knows that they got the pick and um, they collapse on my teammates so that's a mistake from me um, that's I think what that round really shows is you can kind of make decisions in the game based on yourself, but I didn't take into account the position of where my teammate's res was or the position of my other teammate enough and the position of where the enemies were. And that's why that's why I died, I'm pretty sure. Because even, you know, if I do that peak and they're not pre-aiming that spot, I'm pretty sure I can get one and get away. But overall, um, that was a, a poorly played round for me, and we end up losing going down 2-1. Alright guys, so going into round four here, um, this is the really bad side for this map. Um, what I was talking about last round with, oh, we were on the good side, which is why I had to peek. Um, we're on the very bad side, because the heavy spawns right next to them, and they have better zone control. Um, I don't know how Bungie thought this was a good idea, honestly, or how this made it through testing, but Void Titan's been here for two years, so I guess I'm not too surprised. Um, when, when you're faced with a situation like this, if you play default, you're going to lose the round. So you have to kind of change up the way you play, even if it might be kind of dumb or kind of unorthodox in a way, you have to try and do something different. So I come close to this pillar and I full slide. This trip mine was a little bit off, thankfully. Um, so it didn't kill me. You know, if that trip mine was full, then I wouldn't have been able to punish this guy peeking here. Um, this moth, I thought it was like an enemy thing, uh, but it was actually my teammate giving me an overshield. So that, that's why I like kind of panicked a little bit through a, a, a healing date in the corner. Um, this guy hard throws the round here by peeking wide. I think he's trying to get a pick on my teammate there, which isn't a bad play in kind of a regular game. But when you're playing against GLs, um, this is an easy kill for me. And then something chains on his Zavlar there. I don't, it must have been my teammate. I'm not sure how that chained at all, but it did 50 damage, and then I was able to, to clean up with a one-shot to GL. Uh, and as you can see here, my teammate got the pick outside. So I think this round was kind of lucky. A lot of things had to go right for us to win it. We had, you know, the chain, um, you know, making uh, Zavlar one-shot, the trip mine being a little bit off, uh, the person peaking initially, going outside and kind of staying away from the pack, my teammate getting a pick. A lot of these things came into play, and... Um, you know, in reality, just want us around the, on paper is almost impossible. So we got a little bit lucky there, but at, at the same time, you know, you make your own luck. And I think we, we played all the uh, all the right cards there. Okay, so uh, going into round five here, uh, the zone is on a really bad side. Um, let's just pause the game here. So the zone's on a really bad side for them. It's outside. They have the better spawn. Um, this is the main round where I was talking about playing differently and playing unorthodox. Uh, won me this game. If I play this default, I lose this round. And, and as you're going to see here, I'm like, okay, I see the radar pings. There's a guy close. I hit low. And I know that because of this radar ping that they're at like the little yellow, I think it's yellow, the little like barrier. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to swing the shit out of this and hope my teammate trades. You know, hopefully I get one kill. You know, this is a really unorthodox round. I haven't really gone for a, a stupid aggressive peak like this before. So I, I just full send it. Um, doesn't really go well. I get lucky with a little bounce there, but thankfully my teammates recognize it and follow follow me in, clean up the round, and we went around that. You know, if if we played that default, I think we lose that. You know, we would have been in a really bad spot. We probably would have had to wait till the zone pops up and then, you know, hopefully get a good push together, trade effectively. It would have been really tough. So, just uh, kind of changing up how you play and catch your opponents off guard is uh, really really important on this map and with with GLs in general. Okay, so after that round, we are 3-2 up, looking pretty good. Um, we are on the good side, the zone is outside. Whenever I peek this, um, this is kind of like something I like to do on this map. Especially, if, you know, not even just on this map, but on all long maps and angles. I like to kind of jump across, because you get the momentum from the jump. And then if you bounce your head into the wall, you'll see good hunter players use it to kind of continue your, mom your momentum. Um, I do this on a warlock here, to kind of just jump spot across, get a shot off doesn't really matter what damage I do. It's kind of just to get info and uh, to take some space. 
but I see my teammate dies and I'm thinking, okay, um, I'm just going to kind of hold this spot, maybe peek around a little bit, try and get a pick. It's a really, really good pick here. Um, nothing the opponent could do about that. You know, I, I get a full direct pre-fire and then what a lot of people do when they get GL'd is they go to the opposite corner that they're hit at. So I hit him for the 138 and then I just pre-fire the opposite corner, get the kill. And that kind of brings this round back into balance a little bit. Um, teammate gets back up and I'm, here I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to get a rift. I'm locked down this area. Um, but what they do is they just full send on the left here and I could just spam two GLs and they get two picks. And now I'm thinking, okay, we're in, we're in the driver's seat here. I could just kind of play around here, cut off the escape. My teammate can play the res, push him into here and we get the round win. So this was, um, the reason we won this round is I had a really good shot on a Zavlor for the first kill. And I think that bought us some time, our teammate, to get our teammates res. And then I think they kind of just made a mistake by playing too aggressive going into this tunnel here where the two reses are. Um, they they knew I was there and they kind of just pushed into a, a tight corner against GLs, which, uh, as you can see, uh, doesn't doesn't really go so well. Coming into round seven, we're in a really good spot, 4-2 up. Uh, zone is once again on the bad side, and I aggressively pushed the last time, so this time I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try and play it more default. Um, if we lose this round, we still have two more to come back into. I'll have a Dawn Blade or a, a Well, and I'll be able to, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get a good spawn in one of those and I can use that. So this is kind of how I traditionally like to play this this point. Um, I'm going to peek in a little bit just to see see some info. I see that they're really far away. So I'm kind of just seeing how they're going to play this round. And um, as you see here, I peek this. Both of them are sniping. Um, it gets picked, but the good news is here, teammate getting picked doesn't matter at all because they could not trade this res of all without peeking into me. That's why I pre-fired that little spot there, just to make sure someone isn't peeking. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to clear the way, get rid of all the grenades. Um, and most players at this point right here, they would see the zone. You, you can see my teammate starts running in. The zone is starting to get capped. Things are, you know, it's, people are thinking, okay, I just, I have to get on the point. And um, I'm going to let this round play out a little bit before I kind of explain my thought process on it. But the main thing to look at is how I don't just run in and how I play as a support class in this, in this, uh, in this round. Where I'm not taking the initial engagements as I am in a lot of games, but in this round I'm actually playing support for my teammates and just training them effectively. So as you can see there, round goes well for us. A little bit of luck, but the things I want to point your attention to, let's go back here. Uh, so we'll start here. What good players do, and this is what Zavlar does, um, is they're looking at their radar this whole time. So bad players, when they're capping the zone, will just stay on the zone the whole time. But a good player will anticipate the peak. So they know that our entire team is coming from this angle. We have no time to rotate through spawn. So we are all coming through this. So what Zavlar does here is she peeks into us with a shotgun to try and get that opening pick, <clears throat> which is the right play. Um, but I'm predicting that play, so it doesn't really work out for her. So you see, she swings there. I'm expecting the peak. Me and uh, my teammates are able to pressure her down. Teammate on the left here starts dueling. I'm pretty sure he dies, but he gets them low. And I can just put shots in. And um, now we're in a 1v1. I just have to get my kill. I have like, you know, a second, two seconds, three seconds to get the kill. So, which sounds like a short amount of time, but it's actually a lot of time. Um, so I, I just need to make sure I hit my shot. And I get, I get really lucky. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I was, I, I was expecting him to be like all the way to the left, but he actually jumped, which I didn't expect. He, you know, what good players do. They jump into the action, you know. I'm expecting, okay, he's just going to hide and try and cap the zone. But he does something different to try and catch me off. And I shoot the, the GL into the ground, and it, like, bounces off of, like, a tiny little rock in the ground and bounces up and hits him directly. So, un unlucky for him, honestly. I got a little bit lucky there. I might have still been able to win the round. I probably could have uh, plopped my my uh, well down in a panic and still, still won it. But definitely a bit of luck at the end there. And um, we see out the game. So 15 and 4, playing solo. I'm pretty happy with this result. Um, this game, in general, um, 
Eternity is a tough map, and I want to get more of these these gameplay analysis out. Um, so I thought this would be a really cool one to look at. The problem when f I've had to film this video three times now because of audio mismatches, and you've probably noticed it throughout watching this video that whenever I pause the recording, the audio kind of skips a little bit for some reason. And I've updated my drivers, you know, I've I've tried different things in the editing software, and I, I cannot get that to be fixed. So if any of you guys are audio people, and you know how I could maybe fix that for for the next couple of videos, I'd really appreciate it because. How I like to kind of talk about the game is me pausing and playing the video as it's going. And um, I hope it wasn't too disruptive. I hope you're still able to find a lot of value from this video um, because these are pretty fun to make. They take a little bit of time, but it is kind of fun just talking about the game in more of a uh, analytical sense. And I think a lot of you guys enjoyed the last one. So um, I'm going to stop rambling. The video's over. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't dislike the video, fuck you. I don't care. Um, Y'all have a go and see you later.